Today, I'm excited to take you on a tour of the 2021 Mustang Mach-E. This is the key for the Mustang Mach-E. It's a pretty standard Mustang key or Ford key. We got unlock the lock, trunk release, and the panic button. Feels nice in your hand, but isn't anything necessarily super special or different from other Ford models. The window sticker is a little dark behind the window here, but I'll try to give you a little bit of a rundown. This is the Mach-E 4X. It is an all-wheel drive model. The total MSRP on this one comes out to $55,800 and is optioned nicely. The base price is 49,700. One of the fun numbers to look at is up in this top corner right here. The fuel economy is a 90 rated equivalent on the combined city highway, 96 city, 84. Obviously this is a full electric car. Let's start off with the controversial topic right up front here because you can tell that this is designed to look similar to the Mustang. It is a crossover, almost an SUV station wagon. I'm not sure exactly where it would fall in, but it looks and has cues that look like the Mustang. Whether or not it should have been named a Mustang, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but you could definitely tell by the design that it is near design-wise to a Mustang. In the front end, obviously we don't have as much air need for a cooling area here. We do have some uh, active louvers down here that open up when needed. Otherwise, we have some really fun accent lighting that lights up if you unlock or lock your car for your turn signals as well. Now, as we move down the side here of the Mach-E, you'll notice this is where we're really taking a departure from the Mustang name. Mustangs don't have rear doors or a hatch design like that. They do sort of call it a fastback, but it's really not as fastback as it looks because it has an extra little hump right there and it doesn't necessarily follow the lower line. At our front fender here, we do have our charging port that opens up obviously there's not going to be a fuel tank in this car it is full electric but this is where you would plug in and charge and then just in front of our charging port we have our michelin tires wrapped on 19 inch wheels moving down the side of the mach -E, you'll notice if you unlock the vehicle the mirrors fold and obviously they retract when you lock the vehicles the most peculiar design decision i would actually say on the outside of this vehicle is the door handles they are just a button and it has a little handle below. I remember back in like 2000, early 2000s, the Corvette came out and it had buttons for door handles, but they were hidden and kind of looked more traditional. This is definitely the furthest departure I've seen. At the rear door, you'll see that we also have a button just like the front, but curiously, there is no door handle back here. You're just supposed to reach to the inside of the door. Moving around to the back end of the Mustang Mach-E, you can see that it's got a few more Mustang-like features back here, especially the taillights, which light up sequentially when you press the unlock or locks, or if you use your turn signals. I really like this feature and what Ford is doing with their taillights. I apologize for any wind noise. We are fighting the storm here a little bit, but this is a rear hatch, which offers a lot of twice and it automatically opens or closes. There's a fair amount of space back here. It's not like crazy. You can't probably take, you know, a suitcase for each person in the car, but there is a lot of space here. And for most situations, it's going to be plenty. There's also a 12 volt outlet back here and some little storage underneath of the cover back here as well. I've actually been pleasantly surprised with some of the design features and things so far on the Mustang Mach-E. I had heard that the front trunk was a little bit cumbersome to use and I can confirm that, that is true. You have to go inside of the driver's panel where the hood release on any normal car would be and you have to pull it twice. Once you have released it from the inside you'll notice that there is no secondary latch that's why you have to pull it twice inside because there is no latch out here you can just lift it up. Obviously there's some storage in here and that is really helpful but it also is extremely difficult to close. It does not just close like a normal trunk or hood like you would think. I have been doing this review, I've opened this up about three times now, and I have not got it to close the first time once. So if you just go with a normal amount of pressure, it doesn't go. And now it's latched on its first click. So you have to go back inside the vehicle and release the latch one more time, pick it up, and really put some force to it to get the latch to close. Now I noticed that this was a dealer demo and there it does have this little cover right here and I got curious as to what was underneath of it. It was already popped up a little bit. So uh, hopefully I'm not in any trouble for removing it, but this does show some of the inner workings in the motors and everything down underneath here, which is pretty cool as well as your coolant, brake fluid and all those other fun things. Now this would normally be the portion of the video where I start up the engine, 
and give it a little rev, but that's not really possible here, so we're just gonna start on the interior. When you push the button to get into your Mach-E, you'll notice this slightly modern door panel. Not as crazy as some of the electric cars in the past, but it does have a nice metal strip and overall feels pretty nice. It does have this floating speaker design for the Bang & Olufsen, if I said that right, stereo. The door handle is inside of the pocket here. This reminds me of the old Ford trucks from back in like 1999, and I think they still even do it today. It used to be a pool handle. I think I prefer the pool handle design because this one I didn't feel like when I got in and out was as natural. One of the things that might not be as obvious on the outside of the Mustang Mach-E is this area for the battery underneath the car. You can see a very large sill here as well as underneath the door. It's larger than most cars that I've seen. And just one of the things that I noticed as I was going around, we do have the Mustang nameplate here to remind you that you are driving a Mustang even though it's electric. And then when you sit down in your Mach-E, you'll notice that the speaker runs that interesting speaker design runs the whole way across the top of the dash, as well as some stitched leather. Not the most modern interior I have ever seen, especially in the electric car world, but it is really nice. Uh, and it's a nice mixture of classic and modern. Pressing the start button will illuminate a Mustang symbol up on your front display here. This is a pretty basic display, but it was really nice with the information that it gives. It's a large mile per hour reading, which I particularly like, as well as your range and battery percentage, as well as some cross collision warnings up there. It does have, when you are driving down the road, a feature that has the speed limit, I guess if it's a mapped road, that pops up if you're going over that speed limit. On the steering wheel, this is a very nice feeling steering wheel. I like that Ford does very soft steering wheels. They have a little bit more give than other other wheels. These are pretty much standard Ford uh, features on either side for the stalks, as well as the buttons down below and your window buttons over here. I don't prefer the volume to be on the front of the steering wheel. I like the ones that are on the reverse side back here. In the center below here, we do have our shift knob, which you're either gonna love or hate the shift knobs, parking brake, as well as our automatic parking, which Ford has had for many years now. Down underneath, we have USB-C as well as regular USB. There is a nice amount of storage inside of the center console, as well as a 12 volt outlet. And of course, we can't do this review without talking about the huge center stack over here. It is one of the coolest ones I've ever seen. I love that they kept the actual volume knob. I love volume knobs way better than buttons or trying to figure it out on a slider. So really good choice by Ford there. We can go into our drive modes. We currently are in unbridled, which is the most powerful, whatever you wanna say. It also has a propulsion sound that is a little bit uh, maybe gimmicky you would say, but it does add some, you know, drama to the experience if you would, if you would say we also have whisper mode here which is seamless drive calm and quiet and i like that they have these descriptions of each driving mode as well as engage which is balanced fun and and engaging then we have our camera displays here which give you a full view around the vehicle as well as your front and rear as I mentioned before, we also have our parking assist, our access settings. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that Ford did not plan for you to really use the key that comes with this car. They have a, the My Ford app, and you can control all of your unlock and lock functions through that, as well as getting in the car and starting it up. Down here, we also have our comforts such as heated steering wheel, fan, climate control, all of those things that you would expect. Now, one of my favorite things to track when I get into a new car is how quickly it connects to Bluetooth. I think this is a really important thing and some vehicles have the Bluetooth settings like really laid into the menu through several steps. So let's try this. I don't, I have not connected my phone to it before. I don't know exactly how to do it, but we're gonna try. So start the car. And then here it says actually add phone. So we can click that, click add device. The pins match. Voice and there we go. So Please stay alert to change in road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. So that's pretty much how you pair the vehicle. Now this does have Android Auto built in and it is wireless, which is great because all the ones I've used before where you had to connect to a, an actual wire. Climbing into the back seat of the Mach-E, I noticed that it does have a little bit of a low entry right here, so you gotta watch your head just a little bit, but once you're inside, it's not too bad. I got a good amount of leg room, and the most impressive thing is, is you can really enjoy this panoramic roof. It is huge. Uh, it's really fun. I don't know, there's no cover for it or anything like that, and it doesn't open, so I'm curious on a really hot day in the summer how much you know it would affect you, but it is tinted pretty dark, so I don't think it would be too, too bad. 
One of the other nice things is the rear seat does fold flat with just a touch of a button over my shoulder here. And that will allow you to have some really good cargo space and extra room if you need to haul something bigger. With all of those details out of the way, let's get behind the wheel and see how the Mach-E drives. All right, starting up the Mustang Mach-E. You hear that exhaust note right there? Pretty impressive. All right, it made no sound at all other than a little ding. But we're gonna slide our selector here into drive and take off. The interesting thing about driving the Mach-E is I have not been in a lot of electric cars. The only full electric vehicle, well, I mean, recently that I've been in was a Chevy Spark EV, which is not even like the Bolt. It's not a very impressive car, but it was fast, like for, for a little car. It was a little sketchy, a little dangerous because uh, the car was as long as it was wide. Now in our drive modes here, if you select the unbridled mode, like I said, it has the propulsion sound. Um, so you can select to have that on. I have it on right now. It just kind of mimics the sound, a little bit of an engine. So we're gonna try it out here and get on the car just a little bit. Whew. It is quick. It is definitely quick. I, uh, <laughs> you can definitely feel the regen in the brakes because um, it slows down in a hurry. But uh, I don't know, the, the piped in sound, it's kind of electric, kind of like an engine. It's like a mixture of the two. It's kind of interesting, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it gets up and goes. The other two modes, whisper, that turns off the sound immediately. And frankly, I don't really need it. If you're actually driving with the air and things on, it almost drives just like a normal vehicle. You really don't notice it too much. We do have our speed limit warning up here because we are a little bit over the speed limit. We're gonna drop it back down so we don't get arrested. But driving the Mustang, I do, I am pretty much keeping it in the unbridled mode, which would be the sportiest of the modes. My range is 120 miles at 49%. I think the overall range is up to like 270, something like that now in the, with the extended. They say the zero to 60 is somewhere around 4.8 seconds, I believe, uh, which I believe it's, it's definitely quick. It puts you back in your seat, but it's so linear. It's so, uh, it just kind of keeps pulling, but not in a way that an internal combustion engine does. Speaking of engines, the motors on this are rated at 346 horsepower, which isn't a crazy number, but I mean, it definitely, like I said, gets up and goes. And you can even do some spirited driving around the corners. You know, it's not as lively as a vehicle that has an internal combustion engine or makes noise. Uh, it probably handles just as well, but uh, it, it's definitely a different experience. I wish the steering had just a little bit more feel to it. Maybe it's a little bit dead in the center and, and when you first turn in, I feel like, but uh, you, could, you could do some spirited driving. One of the things I did notice is the brakes are one of some of the most sensitive in the automotive industry. They have to be. Um, the top of the pedal is basically all of your brake. I have just about went through the windshield on a few different occasions till I got used to it. Uh, just very touchy, but you would you would be pretty much used to that pretty shortly after driving. With all that, let's head back and finish this review up. All right, we made it back from our test drive and I had a really fun time with this little Mustang Mach-E. Whether it's a true Mustang or not, I'll let you guys decide, like I said. It's so much different driving cars with motors versus cars with engines. The Mach-E is obviously aimed at being a Tesla competitor rather than anything to do with Mustang, even if it does share the name. It is a good competitor to a Tesla and I would love to get one side by side to really do a comparison. That being said, I would not hesitate to buy one of these, especially if you were in a city or area where you don't have to travel outside of that 270 mile range very often and can plug in nightly. Obviously there's other issues as far as, you know, network of chargers, which you really have to consider as well. So is it a buy or is it a bust? I will let you guys decide down in the comments below. 
It's definitely something different than any Mustang I've ever driven. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and thanks so much to Blaze Alexander Ford Mansfield for letting me take this out on a drive.